Now, why do I have multiple copies of Final Fantasy 2 slash 4 and Donkey Kong Country? <laughs> What up YouTube, Kuya Nate, and today I recently finished archiving my entire video game collection and I thought it would be fun to kind of review certain collections, you know, see how I store them, how I play them, uh, some fun facts about them, and at the end just tabulate how many individual games I have for that system and some notable prices on some games. I've kind of decided though not to put, you know, though that whole, this is what my entire collection is worth. I don't feel like that's a... Uh, I don't know, it feels off-putting right now. Let me know in the comments below. Perhaps in the future video, I will do that kind of video. But for today, I'm just going to focus on one console, and that is like my favorite console of all time, the Super Nintendo. Got the nostalgia vibes. So this is generally like a real representation of my office. I got stuff for sale on the floor there. I don't know what that is. I got some chips and some Coke Zero. But this is where I store the majority of my Super Nintendo games. These are loose. Oh, and I forgot. Music store? There we go, lights up. So yes, this is the majority of my Super Nintendo collection. These are the loose cards. The backing of this is just the wall behind it. Now, why do I have multiple copies of Final Fantasy 2 slash 4 and Donkey Kong Country? They're my favorite games, yes. But when I see them at the thrift store, especially for really cheap, I have like no restraint and I just buy it and I add it to the collection there. You can see these are all alphabetical on the shelf here. Let's pull out some notable finds. This one was found at the thrift store. I think you can find a video about that. A lot of people hit me up after asking if they could buy it off me. I think I got it for, did I leave the price tag on this one? No, I didn't. Uh, apparently this one turned out to be a rare game. I didn't know it at the time. Fifle goes west. Somebody put like, wax i think to keep that label from going up this is how i got it at the thrift store look at that 3.99 that's what i paid for this that's a good thumbnail for this video right there i got this for 3.99 back in the day that's when you could take a chance on like games at the thrift store there was more selection compared to today and if you didn't really know the game you could take a chance on it and go hey it's a super nintendo game whatever if i play for five minutes worth its money right what else do I have here? Let's see. One of my favorite beat-em-ups of all time. I used to rent this all the time until I bought it from my local video rental store, Brawl Brothers. See, my problem, quote-unquote, with the Super Nintendo is I liked games that were pick up and play. A lot of arcade-style games. So a lot of the rare games like Chrono Trigger and, I don't know, some other RPGs, I never bothered to pick up. This is another rental game that I loved back in the day. Swat Cats, I have ended up buying that one for $21.99 back in the day. Compared to today's price, that's crazy. That's a deal, son. So that's the advantage, I guess, of being a uh, collector from back in the day. Skyblazer, I bought that from a flea market for like five bucks. Isn't the guy's five dollar bin? I have a manual for that too, actually. This game was from Lester. It's part of the, uh, well, this is part of the Rushing Beat series. Uh, Brawl Brothers, that game I was talking about, yeah. In Japan, it's called Rushing Beat. Jalico, that's a... That's a publisher you don't see often nowadays. They made some really great games for the Super Nintendo. The Castlevania 4, that's a solid game. Turtles, I got this at the thrift store. I don't have this. I was hoping there was a sticker on that one. So that's my loose Super Nintendo collection. If you swing slowly so I don't make you dizzy over here. On this side of the wall, that is all my boxed Super Nintendo games. Let's see here, Brawl Brothers, had to get that complete in box, obviously. This was a gift from my buddy Ian. Donkey Kong Country 3. He got it for me when he started collecting video games because he saw it for really cheap. And obviously Donkey Kong Country, one of my favorite series on the Super Nintendo. Bought it for me for like 75 bucks. I don't know what that's worth today. Let's see here. I bought this from a, what's it called? A pawn shop back in the day. So they sold me all their Super Nintendo games. I don't know if they have this on video, but this is like 2012. Sold me a bunch of Super Nintendo games boxed for like five bucks a piece. That was a solid deal there. Again, Final Fantasy 2. This one is complete in box. I bought that from John Bookman, local flea market legend here in our city, for like 40 bucks. I think I bought that back in like 2013 or something. There you go, that's the rest of it there. This one, 
has some memories in it. If you see some of our old, older Thrift Dweller videos, actually one of the first Thrift Dweller videos we made, we went around to all the thrift stores in the city and this was at Valley Village on the display, in the display cabinet. Yeah, yeah we're kind of tired. Whoa, I almost slipped. Oh, cool. Lucy, I'm buying that shit. Ooh, Populous. Oh, yeah. And the Fortress of Doom, $39.99. It, it came with the box, and the box looks like it's really good condition. It came with a map and the manual in there, and I picked up Paladin's Quest here. Never heard of this game before, it's Enix. Let's see, I think it's just a cartridge. Yeah, just a cartridge. Another $5 pickup from uh, the pawn shop I was talking about earlier. This was a gift from... Uh, 64-bit Matthew, good friend of ours that we met on YouTube. Check out those, uh, what would they call those? Boys Night Out videos that we used to call it when he came into town and we game hunt together. Oh, one of my favorite games. Yeah, SimCity, that's a solid game right there. One of the first games I remember trying to complete, like I got the box. I think I got this one from the uh, pawn shop as well and I had to buy the manual online. So one of the first, I remember bidding on this while I was at work in like 2014. It's really funny on an eBay auction. Bidding on the manual for that, I mean. Oh yeah, look at that. This one is maximum card. I used to rent that all the time from the video rental store. Sorry, I was having trouble focusing. This was a good, I'll put this one away later, but look at this one. Super punch out for the Super Nintendo. Back in the day, you found this on the floor. Look at that price tag, $3.99 for that. See, we put a lot of time in this game. Um, of course, just a classic right there. First time I ever played this game, Gary. Who the fuck is that guy? You lent it to me. <laughs> and, uh, one of my favorite games on the Super Nintendo, obviously. Famicom games, does that count? I don't know. Oh, I got this game from a buddy of mine. I made this, uh, what do you call it? Universal game case cover. I made this, but I got this from a good friend of mine. I'll never sell it. Tony sold that to me. I think he was drunk at a party, but I took advantage of him. So how do I play my Super Nintendo? This is, you'll see. Am I gonna show this in every collection video that I do? My Sony Wega. Um, not a bad TV, looks really nice. Viewing angles are a little bit tough on this one though. I play on my, what do you call that, Junior? I like it, it's a small, cute little form factor. And uh, in this case here, let's see, this is my Nintendo Super Nintendo controller shelf. So I keep all my controllers here. Actually, no, this is like extra controllers under the couch here. This is my controller of choice. This is actually my original Super Nintendo controller. You can see it's been really well worn. Yeah, I had to electrical tape it at the top because I've used this controller so much. It's just, it's super comfortable for me. This thing's actually a shoe closet I got from Ikea. I put some underlighting underneath it. Eventually, there's going to be a very special statue here on top, but this is a placeholder for now. This was actually a good game. Picked it up on eBay. It's one of the few games that's like fully English. It's a puzzle game with Mario and Wario. It uses the Super Nintendo mouse. And from what I played on the emulator, it was fun. I haven't played this one yet, but that one is complete in boxes. Well. I'll keep it down here because it's so big. I don't know what you call that shelf. It's from Ikea. It's like 10 bucks. But on top of that, I keep two of my box Super Nintendo consoles. I have another one that's an exact copy of this box here. But this one is in better condition. The other one I have in my closet. I call that the Closet of Doom. I don't want to open it for you. So in total, I have three complete in box Super Nintendo consoles. That's what that one is kind of worth nowadays. And my pride and joy. This is the one that my parents bought me, I think, in 93. But, uh, yeah, that one, I don't know if that's an accurate value or whatever for that, but... Again, that one is complete. It has the poster right over here. Framed it up. So that is my Super Nintendo collection in a nutshell. According to this app that I'm using, Game Eye, 
I have 214 Super Nintendo games. I have three complete in-box Super Nintendo consoles. I have a couple loose ones in my closet of doom. We ain't going in there. So if I had to summarize my Super Nintendo collection, I would say that it is not like super impressive by any means, but it is really tailored to who I was as a collector and who I was as a gamer back then. A lot of the games that I really wanted from my uh, childhood, my formative years, I got those games. Again, I wasn't really much of an RPG fan like Gary and Ian and all my other friends who were playing. Those games, Illusion of Mana, Gaia Storm. I, I didn't get those and kind of I regret not getting them. Even though there's multiple ways to play them nowadays, it would have been nice to pick those up for really cheap because now you can see the shift in the market from when I first started collecting to where it is today. It's crazy to see how far it's really gone up in terms of value. However, uh, Super Nintendo is one of those things that it would be very hard for me to sell that collection just because it meant so much to me growing up. Um, not to say that I wouldn't sell my collection, I will put this out there now. In terms of my entire collection, we'll talk about it more as this series goes on, but there is a number in my head. I know kind of now what my collection is worth as a whole, but when it comes to Super Nintendo, that one will be very difficult. There's a lot of memories there, not only from back in the day, but from going out with Lester, uh, Ian, you know, all the friends I made along the way. A lot of those memories are encapsulated in these cartridges. And nobody can pay you for your nostalgia. Thank you very much for joining me on today's channel. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, but yeah, that's it. Take care of yourselves and each other.